Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. I am Mark Graben from Kinexus, and we're really pleased that you're here joining us today. It's our first webinar using the Zoom platform. So for those of you who have uh, been attending our webinars in the past, you'll notice that change. And we certainly hope everything is working well for you. Um, if you have feedback um, about the technology or the process here, please feel free um, to share that in uh, the chat window. But more importantly, our session today is titled Strategy Deployment, Driving Strategies Across the System. And we're very fortunate to have our presenter, Bill Griffith, with us here today. He's the AVP of Integration and Standardization with Broward Health. So before I introduce, so Bill has worked as a senior executive coach to transform healthcare by eliminating waste with over $1 billion in cost enhancements and reducing length of stay while increasing volume in key service lines. Bill has a strong operational background in Lean Six Sigma, implementing in multiple industries around the world. So Bill has a lot um, to share with you regardless of what industry um, you work in. Um, Bill has identified process improvements that have eliminated uh, millions of dollars of waste while adding time back to customers and associates. He has a, a BA in finance and economics and an MBA in management. And you can see some of his previous roles and companies there. So Bill, I'll go ahead and hand things over to you. Thanks again for presenting today. Great. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate the opportunity and looking forward to the discussion and lots of questions and dialogue as we go through this. Uh, so thanks again for everyone joining us. I uh, want to walk you guys through and give you kind of an insight of how we've done our strategic deployment. Uh, we've made lots of learnings over the last couple of years. And as continuous improvement goes, we're already working on learnings for our next cycle of how we do strategy deployment here for Broward Health. So I want to start, just kind of give you a quick background about Broward and where we stand and a little history to kind of understand where we're at. We're obviously down in Broward County, which is Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, the mission for Broward is to provide quality health care to the people we serve and support the needs of all our physicians and employees. And our vision from our executive team and our community board is that we are here to provide world-class health care to everyone. <clears throat> we have rolled out, as many healthcare systems and manufacturing companies do, a pillar type approach. And you're going to see that through our discussion today. Uh, these are the pillars that we use, which is quality, service, people, growth, and finance. And we have broken our strategic planning down into those pillars and categories, which you'll see going forward here. So high level, we're going to talk about a little bit about Broward. We're going to talk about uh, deployment of our strategic planning uh, through Connexus. I'm actually going to take you back to what we did before, so you can see what our process was before and then what we're doing now. Um, talking about how we identify those strategies and the connection with those strategies across our four hospital system here in Broward County. Um, towards the end, we're going to share some lessons learned of things we've learned over the last two years and some things we're going to do going forward to make it even better next time. And of course, we'll have time for some Q&A at the end. So as far as Broward County goes and Broward Health, uh, we are a very populated state. We have a lot of visitors. As you can imagine, the snowbirds do tend to come down and visit us quite often. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. We have a roughly projected growth rate of about 5%, and it's a large population from 35 to 64. So that causes lots of opportunities for our strategic planning and how we're going to build and grow for the future. Uh, we do have four hospitals in our system, uh, along with multiple clinics and urgent care centers, et cetera. Uh, we are a safety net provider for Rowdy County, so that does uh, provide us some unique opportunities along with state and federal funding uh, where it applies. Uh, we currently have more than 8,000 employees, and we have just about 3,000 credentialed physicians across our health system. So I'm going to step back. Uh, about two years ago, we were doing our strategic plans across the health system, and we were using PowerPoint and Excel to track all of our strategies and all of our tactics, and it was a very manual process and somewhat siloed. So each hospital did their thing. They came and did a presentation and talked through their strategies, but we had no visibility or correlation across the health system. 
Uh, we also saw that we had some of our key timelines, due dates, and goals slip because we lost that visibility and or we could not see what was happening across different health systems, hospitals, departments, et cetera. So last fall, so our cycle, our fiscal year starts July 1st. So we are coming up to the end of our 2020 and we'll be in uh, 21, 2021 starting July 1st. So last November, our executives and our board members all got together and did a review of our strategies. What does the 10 year plan look like? And where does Broward need to be? And what are the key opportunities or strategies we're going to do to achieve that? Uh, with that discussion, it was very focused around our mission, which is to take care of our patients and our associates. And then how do we build out those plans to achieve those goals? So that discussion started uh, almost six months before we were actually needing the strap plan, which means July. Uh, the benefit of that was we were pretty much done with our 21 strap planning uh, by the end of February, beginning of March. So a majority of it was done before the COVID-19 cycle uh, kicked in. So we were actually ahead of the game and that allowed us to continue moving forward. Uh, we have seen some slippage with the 20 strategic planning, uh, but we're very comfortable where we're at for the 21 strategic planning. So once we came up with those system-wide goals and our 10-year plan, we then connected those strategies <clears throat> into key opportunities for each of the hospitals and then also our system goals. We connected those key strategies with our pillars, the finance, growth, people, service, and quality. And then we built out the overall goals and objectives for each one of those strategies and then shared them with the executives at each one of the hospitals uh, end of December. And then we started working through the process of building out the strategic plans, both locally, meaning within specific departments that rolled up to the hospital level, then rolled up to our corporate strategy level. So, for example, one of the areas obviously that was identified was orthopedics, cardiovascular, and population health management. So, those were then crossed between the four hospitals and what each of the hospitals needed to do to grow each one of those service lines or areas of focus. We built a template within Kinexus to help keep track and manage those strategic plans. I'm going to show that to you here in just a minute. And then we shared those plans with our executives and they added in those key activities or tasks underneath each one of those strategies. We did change it this year compared to last year when we did the strategic planning. Uh, last year was very text driven. We changed the template this year to be very due date and timeline driven, which you'll see on the next slide. So instead of talking through the opportunities and talking through the discussions in our meetings, we now have very specific timelines, due dates to achieve those strategies, which was a good enhancement for this year. And then the other thing we had every senior executive do is tie it to a metric. So if the ultimate goal was to grow orthopedics, then we needed a number as far as number of cases or a percentage of growth, or maybe it was a new orthopedic service line. Maybe we're adding in hands that we didn't do at one of our hospitals before. So we needed some type of KPI for every strategy, and that was something else we added this year uh, that we did not necessarily have last year was a chart and a KPI for each strategy. This is our template we built for this year. Uh, so you can see up at the top, we have details around what the key initiative is. Uh, this is a test one that I made for this discussion. <clears throat> so we're looking at growing cardiovascular in this example. Uh, we connected it to one of our pillars. In this case, it's growth. We have a status that we can change from green being on track, yellow as in a caution territory or needs assistance, and red is uh, exceeding or behind schedule. Then we have a brief description underneath, and that's what we changed uh, from last year to this year is to make it very simple. The description up above and then down below, you'll see the three boxes for 21, 22, and 23. Those are the specific improvements that we're going to do to achieve the outcome listed above. And we do all of our strap plans on a three-year cycle. 
So we update for this year for the next three years and then continue to move that forward. The box to the right where the KPI is, you'll see in this case I've picked cast volume. So we're going to look at growing cats, maybe it's adding a new cath lab to one of our hospitals. So we're looking to add new services <clears throat> to a hospital. The top right, you'll see the facilitators. So we keep track of it with, we always have an executive sponsor, which is typically the CEO at the hospital. And then the key team members, which could be the ED manager, it could be the cath lab manager, um, radiology, et cetera. And then we use this to track those going forward. And we use the comments section very extensively to communicate around these strategic plans um, by individual plan going forward. In the bottom section, you can see the key activities. We built this so that we can see all three years in one Gantt chart. So we can really keep track and measure that we are going to achieve the goal that we identified uh, with the plan that's laid out for the next three years, not just year over year in the middle section, but as a total across the three years on the bottom section. One of the things we saw last year, and then we uh, got better this year, but we still had some opportunity, was once the hospitals put in their strategic plans, there was some duplicate efforts, meaning two hospitals were working on the same thing and they were not connected together. So once we put all the strategic plans in, we had a session where we invited all the hospital executives and our senior leadership together to review all the plans and then work on eliminating any duplicate work or any work that just was not going to happen in the next three years, uh, whether it be too much work or financials or funding or whatever it is. Uh, so you can see here on the right, we started with over 400 strategies around growth, 288 around finance. Uh, as you guys know, from a strategic planning standpoint, way too many strategies and we needed to consolidate and re reduce the focus to get more done uh, and not have so many listed there. So we took that opportunity to build out a work list in Kinexus that shared all of the strategic plans by location. And then we started consolidating those plans and building a connection between the four hospitals where applicable. So for example, two of our hospitals are trauma hospitals. So we wanted to make sure those two hospitals were working together on the trauma program versus individually working on trauma as an independent hospital system. So we used Kinexus to help summarize and keep those strategies in line. We built this uh, list format in order to view it very simply and make sure that we had consolidation. And then we built a naming convention so that you can see where it says BHIP, B-H-I-P, that's our Broward Health Imperial Point. So we standardized all the naming nomenclature so that we could tell very quickly on a master list where the projects were, who was responsible for it, and without digging into the projects, we could see what the strategy was that we're talking about. After we cleaned up and consolidated and eliminated duplicate work, uh, we got it down into what you see here with 95 for growth, 69 for finance, et cetera. Uh, I think there's still some duplicate work we can work on as we move forward into 21 for us, which is starts in July. We actually have our monthly operating review meetings here uh, this week, so we'll be talking about some more consolidation, but that's a very good improvement from where you, we originally saw it, as you saw two slides ago. We've also rolled out a balanced scorecard model or template. <clears throat> so we use the same pillars at the top, finance, growth, people, service, and quality. And then we have this built uh, through Kinexus so that you can sort it either by campus, meaning medical center versus Imperial Point, or you can list it as a whole, meaning the entire health system. So you can see all of the KPIs or metrics across the middle there. You can see the status with the green circle, letting us know we're on track for those items. And then down below, uh, we have all the key projects and initiatives and improvements listed uh, underneath there. So we can then present it whether it be in a large forum or at our board meetings or in a large like conference room with a group of executives. I had mentioned our monthly operating review meetings. This is kind of morphed into a new platform of where we review the strategic plans monthly. Uh, they used to be more finance-based and we switched them now to 
more of a strategic planning and discussion, not as much on the finance, although we do spend about 10 minutes talking about the financials. So within Kinexus, we built these pillar boards where you can see the strategic plan, you can see who's responsible for it, you can see when it was updated last, whether it's on track or not, and then some improvement details around those tasks associated to those strategies. The expectation is that we come to these monthly operating review meetings with updates already included, anything that is complete, we talk about briefly just to verify it was done, how did it go, any lessons learned. Uh, the ones that we really focus on are the ones that are in red, and those are the ones that are overdue or behind plan. And then out of these monthly operating review meetings, we build action plans to get these actions back on track to get the uh, strategy in place. So this monthly operating review meeting has become very powerful and it makes sure that we are accountable to the timelines and what we agreed to um, several months ago at this point. So I mentioned some of the lessons learned already. <clears throat> uh, one that we learned last year that we had to update to this year. We made the mistake of taking our PowerPoint template and taking the boxes and building it directly into Kinexus. Uh, what we should have done is start with a blank slate and build out the way that we wanted to manage it directly. Uh, similar to those of you that are in healthcare that have switched over from paper form to electronic form, we always try to copy what we did on paper into electronic and it just doesn't work. So this year we rebuilt the template, redesigned it, and then rolled it out the way it works better for us from an electronic standpoint. We were also not as specific last year with goals as we were this year. So we really tied into the metrics, the KPIs, and making sure that we had a way to track things going forward. We also wanted to make sure the strategies aligned across the health system so that we eliminated any duplicate work and we made it very easy for the system to achieve those goals and strategies going forward. As I mentioned, we changed the template to really drive around the activities, the improvements, with very specific due dates. Uh, those due dates are reviewed on a monthly basis in the MOR meetings, and then we also review them prior to even rolling out the strategic plans to make sure they're aligned and it makes sense. Also make sure there was no sandbagging or pushing dates out that we know we could get done sooner than later. We wanted to make sure we aligned the key activities or the improvements underneath it so you could see the progression, which is that bottom box, so we can see the three-year plan and make sure that everything is rolling smoothly going forward. Before, we could see it as well. Even though it was electronic, we couldn't see the flow with the Gantt chart, and that's been a huge help to make sure that we align that three-year strategy. Having a KPI has become very important around these strategies. Uh, before, as I mentioned, some of them did not have metrics, so that we would say they were done. We didn't have a good way to measure to validate that they were done or that we saw the success that we thought we would out of it. Out of that, for those metrics, uh, if it's a current metric that we're tracking, something we have historical data on, uh, we've gone back 12 months for that data. We want to see a 12-month run. So if we were historically doing 100 every month, and our plans to increase it by 10%, we wanna make sure that we're achieving that. So that 12 month historical is something we have built in going forward. And then lastly, the modification of the monthly operating review meeting has allowed us to really focus and keep a timeline. And for those Lean Six Sigma folks, your tax time, making sure that we are really hitting that timeline and due dates, and we don't let things slip. So as soon as it goes overdue in Kinexus, or if it even gets close, as you know, within Kinexus, it turns orange within five days, uh, we are already starting the conversations and figuring out what we need to do to get that completed on time. Or if it's something that we couldn't control, like the COVID breakout, then we update those timelines so that we know we can push things out and do it effectively. All right, Mark, I'm going to turn it back over to you for a couple announcements, and then we can do some Q&A and discussion. Yeah, well, thank you, Bill, and we'll have a lot, of, uh, a lot of time to do that, and the questions are coming in, and I've got a few questions for you, so I'm um, looking forward to the next phase of the session here. Um, so if you can go ahead and advance it, let me tell you about 
our next webinar. Um, it's going to be on May 21st. It's going to be presented by Katie Anderson. She is the author of the upcoming book, Learning to Lead, Leaning to Le Leading to Learn. And you can go and register for that um, right after the session today. You can go to kinexus.com slash webinars. And, and the, she's going to be talking about some concepts from her book. Um, I'll try again. Um, learning to lead, leading to learn. Um, creating an intentional people-centered culture. So I think there's going to be um, a lot uh, for, for everybody. So I encourage you to register for that. Again, kinexus.com slash webinars. Uh, for Kinexus customers, or actually, if you can go back real quick. For Kinexus customers only, the next training team office hours is on May 29th. And you can also register uh, at kinexus.com slash webinars. All right, so then next, I want to tell you about some additional resources. Uh, all of our past webinars are um, available in our on-demand library. You can find that. Um, and there's a, a link in the sidebar to kinexus.com slash webinars. And we also have two blogs. If you go to blog.kinexus.com, we've got one that we call our improvement blog that has posts and information that we think is um, helpful um, to, to everybody in our community. And then there is a secondary blog that is focused on information for customers. Um, every, everyone can read that, but um, the customer updates are, are more about the software. The improvement blog is really more about um, topics like continuous improvement, lean management, things like that. Also want to tell you about our podcast series. If you are a subscriber, you would have heard a short uh, conversation that Bill and I did as a preview of today's webinar. The, the full audio from the session today will be in the podcast feed, and, and we often publish um, other content there. You can find it at kinexus.com slash podcast, or you can just search Kinexus in your favorite podcast app or directory. And with that, we uh, will go through um, Q&A. We have a lot of questions coming in, so thank you everybody uh, for that. Um, Bill, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the origins or when you first introduced strategy deployment and how that fit into the broader lean journey, if you will. Sure. So we've all we've done strategic planning here for a very long time. As I mentioned, we did it through PowerPoints and uh, Excel files, Word documents, etc. Uh, as far as the connection with lean and process improvement, uh, my team really got involved about two years ago when we looked at how we could improve the process and what could we do to streamline and eliminate waste of the strategic planning. Uh, the, actually, the goal of strategic planning is not to waste time or do duplicate work but is to make sure we're driving and uh, achieving our goals and our vision for the health system. So my team got involved to really focus on streamlining it, making it more effective, and then assuring that we were hitting those timelines and goals, and then really focusing around the waste elimination of duplicate work was the main focus around the process improvement team. Okay, thanks. Um, there's a, another question here, maybe related to the early days. How did you capture the senior leadership team's attention and get their involvement um, on this? So the strategic plan feeds into our balanced scorecard, which I showed briefly on this slide deck. And then our incentive plans for our executive teams and our partnerships are all driven around that balanced scorecard. So the executives are very keen on achieving those goals because it's tied to our incentive plans and tied to our uh, bonus comp structure associated here for Broward. So they were very engaged in the very beginning. Okay, great. Um, how difficult was it to get agreement on those five pillars and to get agreement on what those exact words were? The concepts weren't hard as far as quality, people, service, et cetera. Uh, as any organization, we had some struggle as to what to call each one. A lot of it came down to we did a lot of research. Uh, our friend Google helped us find other health systems. And, of course, a lot of our executives had come from other health systems. So we consolidated those ideas and came up with those names for those pillars. Uh, they're very similar to what you see in a lot of health systems. Or even when I was in manufacturing, we had a lot of those same pillars uh, that we used both in manufacturing and in healthcare. Um, it was more about the 
details underneath the names that was a little more specific. So under each one, we put a little verbiage, like three or four bullet points, explaining what quality meant and what it was from a health system standpoint. Uh, so that it wasn't so much around the name meaning quality, but what was quality specifically for Broward Health. And I think that helped connect everyone to those pillars more than where I've seen before where it just says quality, but there's no details or connection to that underneath it, if that makes sense, Mark. Yep. And there's kind of a related question um, about alignment and agreement. Um, that can be difficult to get agreement on the measurements or, or KPIs. Um, can you talk about the process for helping a group define a good KPI and decide on what worked best for that visual management and display? Sure. So some of our metrics are driven by uh, joint commission, state, county, federal regulations. Uh, so those we don't have much choice on. We have to track those with the way that they're presented. For example, customer satisfaction scores, we use Press Ganey for our uh, partner for that but those questions and those details are pretty well defined from CMS. The other part of it, we really had to do some training with our folks around the difference between leading and lagging indicators. So press gainy customer satisfaction scores are definitely a lagging indicator. We don't get feedback for roughly 60 days after the patient has discharged. So if we're trying to track an improvement, that doesn't do us any good as 60 day delay. So then how do we create a leading indicator associated to it? So when you look at nursing communication, one of the key processes identified that improves that outcome or that score is completing hourly rounding and sharing with the patient kind of a progress and next steps. So we built a way that we could track with a rounding model uh, for the nerve frontline nursing team to ensure we're completing those hourly rounding and that became our actual leading indicator or what we track in our plans. And then 60 days later, when the actual scores come back, we then connect the dots and see that the improvement is actually driving in the right direction of what we think it should based upon that leading indicator of hourly rounding. So we did spend quite a bit of time, Mark, going through and making sure that we had good uh, leading metrics that we could actually use on a daily, weekly, monthly basis that were real time for the most part and not something we had to wait for an extended period of time, such as 60 days for customer satisfaction scores. Yeah. Um, so there's another question. You, you touched on this at the beginning, but um, person to ask might have come late. Maybe you can recap a little bit, Bill. But the question asked, would your planning efforts work without a product like Kinexus? So you can kind of recap what you did before and kind of summarize what you think some of the benefits have been of using our platform. Sure. Um, so we did strategic planning before. It was in PowerPoint and Word and Excel. The problem was very broken and disconnected, and we had a lot of duplicate work. And then we had people doing the same thing at both hospitals, and we could have consolidated and got a better outcomes. So what Kinexus has allowed us to do is to consolidate and give us visibility across the platform and all of our executives have access to all of the strategic plans. So if I'm the CEO at a medical center, I can very easily see what Coral Springs is doing and I can make the connection and build out a strategic plan where we're a partnership for children's services instead of individual. So the answer is yes, you could do it without it. Um, it was a lot more work. There's a lot more duplicate work. And the visibility that we have today using Kinexus versus what we had before, um, we're 10 years ahead of where we could be now uh, than just using PowerPoint. So there was um, another question here. Could you please comment or talk about how you stay flexible in the spirit of PDSA or PDCA when you're looking at planning initiatives three years out? How do you find the balance between looking forward and then adjusting as needed? So strategic planning is somewhat of a, a futuristic vision. So if our goal is to be somewhere in 10 years. How do we get there? But as we all know, not just in healthcare, but even in manufacturing, things change quicker than what we can plan for. So even last year, there were times where we took a strategic plan, we put it in place, we started working on it, and then something in the environment changed, and we just put it on the back burner or we just stopped it and refocused uh, mid-year on a new strategy because of what has changed in the environment. So COVID-19 is a great example. We have had lots of learnings of how we can 
be better prepared for the next time around if something were to come up. And we've already put some of those in place, and those were not part of our strategic plan starting in February. So we have been able to adapt by using this platform. And then within the platform, we built a a simple scoring system, like a risk prioritization number mark, and then a tied specific criteria to that score, and then we could prioritize. So if it fell below a certain threshold, we took it off the list and really focused on those high value, high opportunity strategies. Uh, So the monthly operating review is a chance for the executive team for each hospital to come and they can present a new strategy based upon what has happened, what's, what's new in the market, or maybe there's a new service line, you know, have a new surgeon, somebody's come to us and want to do X, Y, and Z. We can add that new strategy uh, from an executive standpoint and roll forward with a new plan on a monthly basis. Mm-hmm. So this is not set in stone. This is a living, breathing document that we update in real time and review it monthly to make sure that we are focused on the right things even with the consistent changes we see in the market. Okay, thanks. There's another question here going back to the pillars. Um, In trying to agree on words, did you discuss having a pillar called customer or patient, or was that addressed in other ways? So our service pillar is really the customer service slash patient satisfaction slash customer satisfaction pillar. The service for us is really that customer feedback category. Um, a lot of our press gainy efforts are in there from our HCAP scores, and then a lot of the service work around reducing wait times, improving throughput, um, all of our patient flow projects are underneath there. My centralized patient logistics center, a PLC, is under there for service. So that's really kind of the un- all-encompassing service for us. Okay, great. Um, another question here about cascading. How far in the organization do the goals cascade? Uh, for example, uh, does a porter or a transporter in the hospital understand how they connect to the plan and their contribution? Or you know, how would you answer that question when it relates to frontline staff? Does it go down that far, those connections? So it goes down to department level. So transport and then example mark, uh, transport does have a strategic plan or goals tied to it. Uh, so they're looking at response time, making sure we get there within 15 minutes. They have a finance metric, which is three and a half jobs per hour per transporter. We also have a service metric uh, around customer satisfaction. So we built a custom question in Press Ganey around the experience with your transporter. And then we have a finance metric also around productivity. So we've taken the five pillars for transport in that example, and they have um, goals and projects tied to that. And then we have a separate project built out within Kinexus just for transport as a health system. And all four transport departments roll up into that project. And then they report out on their performance as a system for transport for the four hospitals. So it rolls all the way from senior executives at corporate to the executive level at the hospital down to the department level at each hospital. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Um, another question about kind of cascading. How are the KPIs and other progress charts um, shared out into the organization for day-to-day use? Um, there's a second part of the question, so maybe let's just leave it at this. How, how does this? How, how do how do people on a day-to-day basis get visibility to the KPI and uh, the different screens that you showed us here today? So at each hospital, we have a morning huddle. Uh, They start at 8.30. They are staggered so that my patient logistics center and some few others can participate from a system standpoint. And during that huddle, they review their KPIs and their metrics. And we have a huddle board built into Kinexus for each hospital. And then the huddle board includes patient flow data, quality, patient safety, customer experience. And then any ideas or issues come up during that huddle are created as an improvement within the Kinexus huddle board, and then they're tracked within the huddle board by hospital. So that across the system, if something comes up at medical center, I can go in and look at it, I can help from a system standpoint, and we can address it, whether it be a system issue or a local issue, on a daily basis. So they're looking at those huddle boards daily, which are fed 
from our various platforms such as Cerner and Teletracking for the patient flow data. So they use those in the huddles to start with. And then at the leadership meetings at each hospital, which happens monthly, they review them locally. And then we also have the monthly operating review meetings, which is the executive level. And then I think you ended up touching on the second part of the question that talks about um, input requirements or data handling. Um, you know, is there a labor burden to that? Is there a way to automate any of it? It sounds like you've automated some or have you automated all of that or just some? So we've automated some of it, Mark. Uh, the Teletracking patient flow data is automatically fed through the API with Kinexus. Uh, we're still working on the API with Prescani. So what we're doing right now is we're doing an Excel download from Prescani, and then we're doing an importer directly into Kinexus. So it is a manual download and upload process, uh, but our team gets it done in about 15 minutes. And if you think about the 150 questions times four hospitals and the upload process, 15 minutes worth of work uh, once a week is not terrible, but we are working on automating that. We're having some issues getting that data feed to align. As you know, Mark, it has to be very specific and the columns have to match every single time. And for some reason, the data from Press Ganey seems to change almost monthly. So we're struggling with how to make that work. Yeah. Thanks. So another question here, um, do you have a daily management system in place and does strategy deployment tie into that? Um, if so, how is that working? So part of that, I think I Mark would feed back into the conversation we just had about the morning huddles. Right. Uh, so we use Kinexus to drive those morning huddles and the conversations around process improvement. That's the place where associates, <clears throat> so if you think back to a hospital for a minute, the shift change for nursing is typically 7A and 7P. So at 7 a.m., our nurse manager is doing a huddle with the local team on 3 North. That's where the initial frontline feedback comes in. And that's where you know a nurse may say, hey, we ran out of swabs last night. We need to get more swabs. If that's something the nurse manager can handle on his or her own, they take care of it and they move on. If it's something they need to escalate, there's typically a director's meeting about 7.30, 7.45, depending on which hospital. That's where they talk about it from a director's standpoint. And if it can't be handled there, they bring it to the morning huddle at 8.30. At that point, it's then added to the Kinexus huddle board. And then our supply chain would be notified. The executives would be notified. Operations is notified. And then the goal is to get that cleaned up and addressed by the end of the day. So that tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., we can report out to the local team that it's been fixed, here's what the plan is, and here's how we're resolving it going forward. So we really drive through the huddle process in the mornings and then use the Kinexus board to address those system-wide issues that need to be addressed. And there's another question here about huddle boards. Does every idea from the huddle board link to your strategies or pillars? No, there's ideas that come up from the huddle boards that are not strategic driven. Um, it could be, you know, we don't have enough supplies. It could be, you know, a ventilator issue. It could be a security issue. It could be a safety issue. Uh, so in the input for the improvement, you have a drop down where you can select a strategy and connect it to a strategy if it's something we need to relate it to a strategic deployment. But if it's a local or regional fix that we need to implement or a safety or maybe there was an issue in the parking garage, those are not directly connected to a strategy. We are, those are kept local and we fix those local. Yeah. We do keep track of those, Mark. So if we're seeing a consistent theme with, say, yeah. an issue within the parking garages, then we will escalate that to our security team and then approach that from a system-wide standpoint of how do we fix this problem going forward if we see it re reoccurring. So that's where the data from Kinexus can help us to see if we have a reoccurring problem or not. That's great. And I mean, I, I, I agree with what you're saying in general, um, you know, that a lot of things that come up on huddle board are local issues. They're just do it. or they're just PDSA it's if you will. Um, and then, you know, I think the process of engaging people in those improvements that matter to them, you could argue is connected to the people pillar and employee satisfaction and turnover rates and all the other cascading effects from having an engaged, if not satisfied workforce, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there's another question here. Um, with a large organization with multiple sites and leaders, how do you ensure that strategies are actionable and not boiling the ocean? And it might 
refer also to how do you make sure the key initiatives are not boiling the ocean? So part of the review that we did back in January and February with our teams was exactly that, understanding what the vision of the roadmap was to achieve it over the next three years and making sure that we have the right steps. And if we need to break that strategy down into five or six different improvements to show a roadmap to get from point A to point Z, then we did that. Uh, so there's a lot of scrutiny around the strategy and what it would take to achieve it. And we spent a lot of time focusing around making sure that, to your point, we were not boiling in the ocean, that we had a very systematic approach and a roadmap to achieve it with those metrics that we talked about for each one of the strategies. Uh, so it did take a lot of time, but it is something that's very important around strategic planning, as you know, Mark, because we like to think we can get from A to Z within a month, <laughs> but it usually takes us three or four years to get there. Yeah. And then um, I guess in another question about projects or big, sometimes big initiatives. Are your requests for major IT changes in scope of the Kinexa strategy deployment dashboard slash dashboard system? Yes. So our IT system, our team uses Kinexus for the strategic planning for those big initiatives within IT. So we don't keep track of small day-to-day -day operational stuff that IT does. But as far as large system improvements or purchases or upgrades, um, in fact, like our financial platform, we're working on doing a major upgrade over the next two years. That project is built into Kinexus. And we use it to keep track of resources, timelines, and make sure that we have the right allocation from not just an IT standpoint, but from a finance standpoint. And then we have the right allocation for people and resources standpoint. So yes, IT, the large projects are built into strategic planning. And then we have a separate CI project for IT where we keep track of the smaller to mid-sized projects that aren't really strategic, but they're just part of doing business. So for example, um, we had some old laptops and computers out in our clinics that were still on Windows 7. Uh, we have then upgraded all of those to Windows 10. So it wasn't really a strategy. It was more an operational project. But we did have that project in Kinexus for completion. Yeah. Great. And um, there's another question here um, asking about how the concept and usage of KRIs or K-risk indicators is gaining popularity. Is that something that you use and do you have thoughts about how to align KPIs with those KRIs, the key performance indicators with key risk indicators? Do you have thoughts on that? I'm not real familiar with the KRIs, Mark. Can you help me understand what those are? Uh, you know, that that's, that's a new term. Um, uh, for, for me. So, I mean, if the answer is, you know, if that's not part of your framework, that's okay. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but. No, I, I'm a, I wrote a note here. I want to dig into it, but I, I don't, I'm not sure what it's referring to, at least by that name. So sure. I'm going to have to pass for now, but I can do some homework. Okay. But I mean, do you have thoughts in general about risk assessment and, and how that's either part of strategic planning or strategy deployment, you know, risks to the organization and how that's discussed or taken into account? Yes. So we do an annual risk assessment. So that involves, it's an online tool that we use. Uh, each of the hospitals does a detailed risk assessment, looking all the way down into you know, patient safety, quality, risk, contracts, uh, financial, legal obligations, et cetera. And that rolls into a portion of our strategic planning, looking at that risk assessment. And then out of that assessment, it's a survey that we fill out. It then gives us kind of key areas for us to focus or work on. So say, for example, contracts comes up. Uh, we then built a project around contracts and then worked through those issues identified from that risk assessment that we do annually. So we do have a risk assessment portion to the strategic plan, uh, but I'm just not familiar with the KRIs. Good learning. Yeah, and that's something new for me to look up. Someone else added a comment here that a KRI is an indicator that tells you if you've reached a threshold, that's a leading indicator that a risk tolerance may be reached, that it's needing attention before the risk materializes. So that's that's interesting. A good concept. I like the concept. Helpful. Um, helpful for that. 
Um, okay, yeah, and they, they added, you know, KPI tells you how the process is performing. A KRI tells you if there's an indication that you're headed for trouble in the process, giving you time to mitigate the risk before it becomes bad. I mean, um, like to me, that, that reminds me a little bit of one of the purposes of um, control charts or process behavior charts. Yes. Yeah. Um, that you may have a metric where the performance is still better than the goal, but performance has now gone outside of the control limit. So like to me, that's something worth reacting to, even though the metric is still green, the process behavior chart is telling you, hey, there's risk that it's really go going to continue uh, degrading in performance um, to where it gets to a red and you can react before the metric gets red. Yeah, that, I agree with you, Mark. That's, you know, back in manufacturing world, we did a lot of more SPC than we do in healthcare. And we had, you know, manufacturing molding machines that ran 24-7 with SPC that gave you red, yellow, green guidelines and even text alerts on your phone when you're getting out of control or completely out of control. So that, that does connect directly with control charts. Yeah. Okay, um, let's see, we saw if we've gotten a lot of questions. So thank you everybody for um, these great questions. Um, another question asks, how would you describe the difference between um, a strategy and a plan? Or maybe the difference, I think you've touched on some of this, but the difference between a strategy and strategy deployment. You have to, I think even the word strategy, this is me adding on to the question. Strategy deployment implies that you have a strategy to begin with that can be deployed, right? <laughs> So we actually, many of those that you saw where we went from 400 down to 90, a lot of those, what we were considering more operational type improvements than more of a strategy. So strategy is getting us above and beyond. It's achieving that 10 year plan and getting us into that future state of where Brower needs to be. Operational plan is just fixing current operations or maintaining or maybe advancing a little bit, but nothing out of the box or expansion. So if it's a matter of just doing an upgrade or purchasing a new MRI, uh, that was more operational than it was strategic. But if it's about adding a freestanding um, medical operational building of some kind where we have primary care, specialty care, we have radiology, we have lab services, and we're building that platform, that was more of a strategic plan. So we really looked at the operational side versus strategic side and really focused on making sure that what we had in here was not operationally driven, but really pushing outside the box, pushing the limits, and trying to achieve that 10-year plan that our senior executives and our board put out for us. Okay. Um, how long did it take to sort of stand up and structure this whole strategy deployment process, at, at least you know at the beginning? And, and it's probably an ongoing effort, but if you can kind of talk about some of the time frames. So... It actually wasn't real bad, Mark. Um, we built, so this new template, <clears throat> we actually marked out on a piece of paper in one of our senior executive meetings. And then I shared it with our Connexus team, uh, went back and forth with Connexus a couple times on a couple tweaks, modifications. I shared it back with our executive team or for kind of a final review with, of course, a couple more tweaks. And then the team had it up and running in probably 60 days. So we started modifying our version back in October. As I mentioned, we started a new strap planning in December. So it took about 60 to 75 days from start to finish uh, to modify the template, roll it out, do the training, and get the feedback we needed around the new model. Okay, thanks. Um, there's another question here, and this might be not just about Kinexus, but lean practices or other improvement practices perhaps, but what tools and methodologies within Kinexus or more, or more broadly, because um, you know, Kinexus is a supporting platform, um, but what, what approaches are used to advance the various ideas that support the strategies? Can you say that one more time, Mark? Yeah, so if you've got ideas you know, for supporting, uh, for initiatives, for supporting strategies, what tools or methodologies are used? So like, for example, are you doing rapid improvement events? Um, you, you mentioned the huddle boards. Are there, are there, there's, I, I guess, I think the question um, is, is about sort of the mix of those different tools or improvement methodologies or formats, if you will. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. So 
the the huddle is a place where we get the frontline feedback and we get a lot of great ideas. Uh, I've met with a lot of our transporters and ideas they have brought forward along with housekeeping, especially with this COVID recent adventure we've been going through. Uh, but we also have other templates. So we have a continuous improvement template within Kinexus, which is really about expanding or doing a new service or new project or something uh, above and beyond what we're doing today. We have a the standard A3 template, which we use for problem solving. So if we had too many CAUDIs within a nursing unit, we create an A3 template and we work through the problem solving and then share that across the system as a learning. Uh, we use that honor roll function within Kinexus often to share uh, key projects or ideas across the system uh, where it applies, of course. And then we have uh, a basic process of where any associate can submit an idea um, comes in as a, an improvement that goes to a box based upon the location or the hospital. And then we have designated people at each hospital to review those. And if it's something that needs to be addressed from a hospital standpoint, we do so. If it's something that's local, we take it back to the nursing manager. So we have a feedback loop that starts from the very beginning at the front line all the way through our executives that can input it, whether it be on a huddle board with a dry erase or all the way into senior executives that can submit directly into strategic planning. Uh, so we try to encompass the entire organization. Uh, I'm sure there's room for improvement. As you know, Mark, we can always do things better and different. Well, of course, yeah. Um, I, think one, I think one of the things I know that Kinexus is working on this year, at least from the client conference last year, was you know having mobile access via a phone. Um, I think that's been a lot of requests for our team is to be able to do a mobile submission right from your phone while you're sitting in a, in a meeting or if you're in the hallway talking to a patient, being able to create it directly from an app on your phone is, would be a next big step for us. Yeah, a lot of that mobile website functionality is really being um, you know, kind of uh, built out and enhanced so that it's a good mobile experience instead of trying to use a full-blown web page on your phone. Um, yep. Which works, but it's not ideal. So, um, in fact, I'm logging in, just going to take a look at it um, on my phone. But yeah, that we're, we're in an increasingly uh, mobile world. Um, that's that's for sure. Um, another question that came in here: How engaged are the board members, from your perspective, individually or as a whole, in the creation and execution of the strategic plan versus just providing uh, feedback or approving or disapproving once that's completed? They are very engaged. We have a monthly board meeting. Uh, it's the last week of the month. And our board members, uh, we have both a, so because we are a, Broward County is a community hospital system, uh, we have what's called sunshine law. So everything is visible to our community. And then we can do sunset meetings, which is a private meeting. So all of our strategic planning is done behind closed doors. It's not open to the public for lots of reasons. But our board members are very engaged, and they talk with in great detail with our executives about the plans. Um, several of them have access to Kinexus, so they go in and review the plans. They'll make comments and notes in the strategies. Uh, they give a lot of kudos. Of course, they also point out where we might be, be behind or ask questions to get us kind of pointed in the right direction. So our board members are very engaged uh, with our strategic planning and keep up with it on a routine basis. Okay, thank you, Bill. Um, let's see. And and if this is difficult to answer, if, if you don't, have, I mean, you, I guess you always have the choice to not answer any of the questions, but um, to what extent is your leadership bonus pool tied to shared goals versus individual goals at the senior executive level? So it varies based upon the level and organization, Mark. Oh. Um, obviously, the higher in the organization our executives are, the more percentages tied to a risk or at-risk compensation versus, um, you know, a manager or a director in the hospital level. So I don't have the exact percentages by all the levels, but I know it varies based upon the level of the organization. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Thank you for answering that. <clears throat> a couple um, questions, a couple other questions here. Um, what was crucial in the company's culture to help achieve what you've done with strategy deployment? And I guess I would add the other question, like how much of this is chicken and the egg around having certain behaviors or mindsets like PDSA in place 
versus using strategy deployment to help develop those mindsets? I would say we're probably on the, the second side that you mentioned, Mark. So this really started from our senior executives. Uh, Gino is our CEO. Helen's our CAO. Um, Alex Fernandez is our CFO. They really had the vision of how to get where we need to go and really work with the board to build that 10-year vision. And then by having that vision and that roadmap from a 30,000-foot level, that then has directed the organization to do very specific things, which includes process improvement, which includes strategy deployment, um, being able to track key performance indicators and metrics. So I, I think it was more of a vision from our senior executive and our board members that has driven us down this path and making sure that we have the right tools in place, the right teams in place, and that we're always pushing from a process improvement standpoint to achieve that world-class healthcare model that we are working towards. Okay, thank you. A um, couple, two quick questions. Um, so the template that you showed um, for uh, strategy deployment or Hoshan Connery, as it's um, sometimes called by the person asked the question, you know, can you, could you call things instead of key activities, could you call it an action plan? Um, what was your process in terms of, you know, kind of configuring this to match the language and the approach that you use there at Broward Health? So, yes, in working with the Connexus team, we could have changed the names or modified it. However, we wanted to make sure it stayed connected with the A3s and the CI templates we already had built. So the nomenclature and the names were similar between the different templates that they were using. So we didn't want to make up different names for different templates and have the same thing mean something different within each template. So we aligned and had them from a system standpoint aligned with the name and nomenclature that we already had in place with the projects that we were using, Mark. Okay. And then uh, final question here, and we'll wrap up. It's almost top of the hour. You, you've touched a little bit on how you've had to be agile and responsive with the COVID crisis, but final question that came in about that. Has the COVID crisis helped you identify gaps in your strategic planning that may be added over the next few months? I guess that'll be a kind of our closing thought. So we have definitely had a lot of learnings from this COVID uh, process we've been going through the last six weeks. Uh, we've learned a lot about supply chain. We've learned a lot about what we need from an inventory standpoint, even processes for managing visitors and patients through the process within the healthcare platform. Uh, so we have already made some adjustments to our strategic plan based upon some learnings we've had. I imagine as we move forward, um, we'll do some debriefs over the next few weeks as we move more out of this COVID um, immediate concern versus kind of what the future state looks like and what the new normal is. And we'll have some more learnings and shared opportunities as we advance. But yes, there has been learnings and we have already been modifying some of our strategic plans based upon what we've learned. And some of the stuff that we thought we were going to get done in the next six months is not going to happen. I mean, we are completely changed from what COVID has put us through. So there are some things that will be on the back burner probably until next year at this point. Well, um, thank you, Bill, for for one, for sharing those reflections. You've given us a, a lot to think about um, for, for organizations in, in this crisis. And, you know, in general, a lot of um, great thoughts and lessons and reflections around um, strategy deployment um, there at Broward Health. So again, our, our presenter, I want to give a, a big thanks uh, to Bill Griffith for the presentation. And you, you, you sparked so much uh, Q&A. Um, thank you uh, for, for doing that and addressing those questions um, so well. So again, I want to uh, thank also the attendees. A lot of people held on to the very end here. Um, you will again, re will receive an email with a link to the recording and a link to the slides. And um, invite you to check out the on-demand library or to register for future webinars at kinexus.com slash webinars. And I'll just pass along. Here was a, a chat comment, Bill, to end on. Exceptional content and quality. Thank you. So, Bill, thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. You too. Be well. And everybody else, uh, please be well during these times.